Nick Baldwin for Severe MMA here with a UFC middleweight contender who takes on Paulo the Eraser Costa this weekend at UFC 226 here in Las Vegas. It is Uriah Primetime Hall. Uriah, thank you so much for taking the time. Great to meet you. Great to talk to you. Uh, how are you feeling just a few days out from uh, this fight against Paulo Costa? I feel good. I think we should change his name from Paulo the piece of paper, whatever his last name is. But I feel good. Camp's been great. Uh, welcome to some of the best guys, and it's only a matter of time. Everything go well? You know, camp, as you said, was great? Yeah, you know, we uh, we started a long time ago, you know, because I think the fight was supposed to happen. It didn't. I think the fight didn't happen because he wanted more time to train, which is fine. But uh, we had a successful run, and we adjusted to a lot of things. Uh, I introduced to a lot of things that will help me, especially with the weight cut. So, yeah, man, we're just ready to go. You're obviously a veteran at this point. You've had countless UFC fights. You've been around for years, but is it still kind of cool being p p a part of International Fight Week and you know all this media, all the obligations, and obviously it's a big card on Saturday. I don't really fall into it, man. I'm I'm one of those dudes. I'd rather just fight. You know, it's like, oh, we fighting three hours. Let's just do it. But it comes with it, and you know, I understand how the media works. It's more of a sell. It's a show. It's to get the word out and. I don't, I don't feed into it. It comes with it, but I don't, I don't feed into it. You kind of wish it was a Saturday afternoon right now? I wish it was like the Tough House where it's like cut weight, and next day you show up, go in your locker room, fight. And, you know. What do you make of Paulo as an opponent? Uh, you know, do you like the guy? Um, so far I've been hearing a lot of negative things from a lot of Brazilians from him. Um, I don't really know him. I know he's young. I know he's hungry. I definitely know he's under juice. But uh, he's just confident and he's probably overconfident and I'm definitely going to use that against him but what I definitely know is he hasn't fought someone like me he's fought people that are scared of him I'm not afraid of him he's a man any man could be beaten you know so it's just a matter of time me doing what I do best do you think he's overlooking you just because when you've never lost a fight when you're undefeated you are the most confident person there is and sometimes you don't realize you know how tough of a test you have in front of you is that do you think fair it doesn't even matter what he thinks at this point, you know. He trained, I'm trained, he had his camp, I had mine. It's just whoever goes out there and imposes one's will. For me, it's it's an important fight because a, a kid like this, it's important for me to kick his ass. Um, he spoke a lot of shit, and, and I'm a respectful guy and, until I don't like you. Like, I don't really talk shit to anybody until someone talks shit to me. And for some reason, all these guys are talking shit to me. I get the whole aspect of it where it's like, Let's uh, talk some shit so we can get him riled up to maybe uh, use him to get to a certain place. Or gatekeeper, they want to call it. But, yeah, I don't like him. You, of course, had a, a health scare uh, going up or, or leading into a planned fight against Vitor Belfort. Uh, is everything okay going into this fight? Yeah, body's well. Um, adjusted to a lot of food. Realized I was allergic to a lot of food, uh, which as you get older, and you know, you, you, you got to fine tune your body. Um, but it was, I was, it was injuries and other things I was neglecting. You know, this is my tempo. And most of the time, and maybe some professional fighters would tell, they ignore certain things. You ignore, uh, you know, a messed up elbow. I mean, I fought with injuries before, but it was a stomach problem. I ignored it, and it caught up to me, so I paid for it. But I readjust, reevaluate some stuff. I changed my mindset, and I started early than normal. I became more disciplined with it because it's hard to be disciplined, and I, I think I'm back on track. Back in January, was that the scariest moment of your career? Um, no. I think the scariest moment of my career, I don't even, I mean, they're all scary, bro. You're a fighter. I guess sometimes you have to be scared to, scared to win needles, fights and all that. I'm scared of needles. Needles? Not, not a fan? Not a fan, bro. Even when you were growing up, was that sort of, you know, oh, just a, as a baby, as a, you know, youngster? I never liked them? I love how doctors are like, aren't you a fighter? Like, motherfucker, let me stick you 20 times, and then you tell me if you don't like a needle. But, no, I'm not a fan of needles. <laughs> as far as the actual matchup, uh, how, how do you feel like you, you know, match up stylistically against Costa? Where are you better than him? Uh, or, or perhaps is that just everywhere? I think better everywhere, man. He's just, he's big and strong. That's the only thing he's been dependent on. And when you're strong, naturally it builds your confidence. You know, I'm dynamic strong. I'm strong from every angle. All I need is timing, and all I need is an opening. Will you be the first fighter in the UFC to challenge Paulo Costa? I'll be the first fighter to defeat Paulo Costa. Raya, thank you so much for the time, and the best of luck to you on Saturday. Thank you, sir.